Hey guys, I want to make a quick video because the campaign I recorded went belly up and I might as well get this off my chest. There is this unhinged video from the channel After School that seems to be a re-upload from the Gaia streaming platform, a platform designed to appeal to chicks who are interested in astrology, crystals, and vaccine skepticism. I remember watching this video when it first came out and thinking it was totally absurd. The crux of the video is that the pyramids were built to provide universal energy to mankind, which Nikola Tesla was aware of. I'm not going to sit here and debunk an entire 30 minute long TV program on one of the most unhinged theories I've ever heard, but there is one particular part that stuck out to me as a person who loves ancient history and of course it features everyone's favorite pseudoscientist, Graham Hancock. For the uninitiated, Graham Hancock is a researcher who continues to press the belief that mankind's civilization is much older than previously believed. He maintains that a giant cataclysm wiped out a previously advanced global human society and that this is evidence in numerous archaeological sites. Of course, he doesn't seem to have a robust understanding of science or history and just seems to cherry pick whatever he can find to support his crackpot ideas. You can think of him as almost a diet version of ancient aliens, beloved by boomers and people who smoke marijuana all the same. His appearance on his own new Netflix show and the Joe Rogan experience is proof enough of how beloved he is by these two groups. The clip is only about 2 minutes long, from 5 minutes 28 seconds to 7 minutes 22 seconds, but it concerns a common motif of Mesopotamian iconography, which are these little buckets or bags that different divine figures seem to be carrying. Graham Hancock sees them as a, quote, badge for office, unquote, for some kind of mystical brotherhood that preserved technology before the biblical flood. He seems particularly interested in the fact that two different cultures that are right next to each other each have the same artistic motif, as if cultural diffusion does not exist. The most absurd connection he draws is that the bags depicted in these Mesopotamian reliefs are somehow related to similar looking bags at Gobleke Tepe, a pre-agricultural archaeological site in eastern Turkey. These two bags that he shows are in no way similar to each other, as the bags on Gobekli Tepe are missing the actual figure holding them, a key part of the motif in Mesopotamia. Even if they were related, there's nothing more ubiquitous in humanity th than a bag or bucket. As long as humans have existed, we have developed tools for carrying things around, so the fact that hunter-gatherers and Mesopotamians both use them should be a surprise to no one. While in university, I wrote an entire paper about relief artwork from ancient Assyria, and I recognized this motif from my research. These bags are not bags, they are buckets for date palm pollination. For them to pollinate, pollen from a male flower must make contact with female plants. In nature, this is done with wind, but with the development of agriculture, it is much more efficiently done by hand. This is where the bucket comes in. To ensure that the male part of the tree doesn't dry, it is periodically dumped in a bucket filled with water. In the center of many of these motifs, you can even see a highly stylized date tree. In Mesopotamia, dates were of extreme religious importance. The comparative abundance produced by date palms as opposed to the harsh desert climate of Iraq stuck out in the minds of the Mesopotamians. One of their most important deities was Inanna, a god of fertility, love, and agricultural production, who is called the, quote, Lady of the Date Clusters. What we see in these motifs is that the action of pollinating date trees has come to be stylized as the gods conferring abundance, fertility, and productiveness upon the king, and therefore his kingdom. So no, Graham Hancock, these buckets are not badges for an ancient brotherhood that was preserving the gift of knowledge and civilization. These buckets were part of everyday life for Mesopotamians and would be instantly recognizable to them. Something similar can be seen in ancient Egypt. A common symbol of the pharaoh's authority was the crook and flail. While to us, these may seem strange, in Egypt, the crook and flail would have been ubiquitous symbols for a responsible shepherd. These symbols were then used in an ideological or artistic context to represent the pharaoh's authority and his role in society. Saying that these bags from Mesopotamia are marks of some kind of ancient antediluvian brotherhood is like saying that ancient aliens came down and gave the pharaohs crooks and flails to control their people. Total nonsense. Sorry if this seems like a random video, but I really can't stand this woo-woo bullshit, especially when it comes close to something I've personally studied. Anyway, be sure to like and subscribe. Take care, everyone.